Doctors prove the palm olive plan brings two out of three women lovelier complexions in 14 days. For the palm olive plan was tested on women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, even skin that was not clear. Yes, regardless of age, type of skin, or previous beauty care, 36 doctors proved the 14-day palm olive plan brings fresher, brighter, younger looking complexions. So get palm olive soap and start your 14-day palm olive plan now. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Oh, that makes life seem worthwhile, dwells in your eyes, and the spell of your smile. Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, dream girl hair. <laughs> the Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, John Brown, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing, The Best Things in Life Are Free. The moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. The stars belong to Flowers in spring, the robins that sing, the sunbeams that shine, they're yours, they're mine, and love can come to everyone. The best thing in life are free. Sing the sunbeams that shine, they're yours, they're mine, and love can come to everyone. The best things in life are free. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly, brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and feel the difference. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate's instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder, for Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world today. For cleaning teeth, for flavor, for sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's favorite toothpaste. Try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream for every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth.
Well, it was yesterday, as Dennis was coming home from work, that their paths happened to cross. She eyed him once or twice and then began to follow him. This had never happened to Dennis before, so he walked faster. But she walked faster, too. Finally, he stopped and asked her nervously to go about her business. She merely rubbed her head against his trouser leg and wagged her stump of a tail. <laughs> and since no one knows better than our young hero that a dog's life is not an easy one, he took her back to the Anderson boarding house to beg her a home. Leaving her outside on the porch, he went in to tell Mrs. Anderson the story of the poor, friendless creature. He thought he could see a tear dim the corner of her eye as he spoke. And when he was finished, she said, Dennis Day, get that beast out of here this instant. But Mrs. Anderson... Are you out of your mind? I'll have no strange mongrel in my house. Ah, oh, gee, Mrs. Anderson, the poor dog has been roaming the streets. It's ten below zero outside. Let me keep her in my room where it isn't nearly that cold. <laughs> I told you to get her out of here. But I'm sure you wouldn't say that if you realized what a fine, handsome, intelligent-looking animal she is. Wait, I'll show it to you. There. Isn't she cute? Hello, doggy. your handsome, intelligent-looking animal. Yes, ma'am. And notice how nice and mature she is. See? No teeth. <laughs> well, you can bet that's the only thing she has none of, the way she's scratching herself. Oh, all dogs do that. Not that way. That dog has ticks. She has? I can't hear anything. <laughs> Well, whether you can or not, get her out of here. I won't have that mangy monstrosity in this house, and that's final. Mrs. Anderson, I love this dog. What if I were to tell you, if she goes, I go? I dare you. <laughs> I withdraw the offer. <laughs> Too bad. Seldom have I been so ready. But, gee, if you'd only let her stay... Oh, good morning, Mr. Anderson. Good morning, my boy. <laughs> You too, a burning dream. Good morning, Herbert. <laughs> well, what have we here? Hello, Poochie. Uh, shall we be friends? Herbert, I don't like that beast. Uh, so long, Poochie. Nice meeting you. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for, Dennis? Take this animal down to the pound where it belongs. But gee, Mrs. Anderson, she's a cocker spaniel, just like Mrs. Stewart's show dog. Maybe she's valuable. If we cleaned her up a little... Dennis, I consider the subject disposed of. I think you know what that means. Yes, ma'am. Keep quiet before I'm the next subject to come up. <laughs> exactly. Goodbye, Dennis. So you didn't take her down to the pound after all? I just couldn't, Mildred. I started to, but when I looked into her eyes, I... I got to thinking. What? that maybe this dog was somebody's mother. <laughs> if it was a female dog, or the thought probably wouldn't have occurred to me. <laughs> no, I guess not. So I asked myself how I'd like it if someone found my mother on the street and took her to the dog pound. <laughs> so I decided I wouldn't. Well, so what did you do? Oh, I took it to a kennel instead. It cost me nearly my whole salary, but they're gonna clean her up fine. They're gonna shave off all her hair so she'll get rid of those ticks. Oh, Dennis, you're just a darling to do all that for a stray dog you found in the street. I wish Mother would just realize what a wonderful person you are. Well, don't you worry. She may not be treating me this way long. Why, what do you mean? Well, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I've noticed that Mr. Willoughby is looking pretty weary lately. I think he's about ready to retire. Oh, golly, and that you run the store? Oh, Dennis, do you really? Yeah, he must be awfully tired. He hardly criticizes me at all anymore. Just looks <laughs> at me. He just looks at me every now and then and says... Why don't I give up? <laughs> oh, Dennis, if only you could hasten things along. Get him to retire now. Huh? Well, sure. Convince him he needs a rest, that he's getting old and has to get away from it all. You can talk him into it. Oh, gee, Mildred, I wouldn't dare. He might get mad. Dennis, think what it would mean to us if you ran that store. Haven't you got any ambition? Aren't you a typical American boy? Sure. Well, then where's your courage? I don't know. Maybe it was deported. <laughs> Dennis, you can do it You've got to do it The idea is to just keep hinting very subtly That he's not the man he used to be Well, all right, I'll give it a try 
but I just hope the man he used to be doesn't rise up in the man he is now and ruin the man I hope to be. <laughs> Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, Mr. Willoughby, you poor old soul. <laughs> I see you managed to make it to the store again this morning. What? What are you talking about? And why are you staring at me? Do I look strange? Oh, no. You're looking fine. Very natural. <laughs> Dennis, have you been nibbling at the rum toffee again? Oh, no, sir. I'm just admiring you for keeping on like this at your age. Never mind my age. Just get to work. We're going to be very busy today because tomorrow's a holiday. Oh, that's right. Lincoln's birthday. What was he like, Mr. Willoughby? <laughs> Dennis, are you crazy? What's the matter with you today? What's the matter with me, he asks, and him and his condition. What courage. Are you suggesting that I don't look well? Notice the way I'm dressed, Mr. Willoughby? Yes, you're wearing a dark suit. I'm ready. <laughs> Now you stop that nonsense. I never felt better in my life. I know. That's what they all say before they... Before they... Before they what? I can't say it, but keep your tuxedo pressed. Now look! <laughs> Mr. Willoughby, every once in a while you mention retiring. Now retiring? if you really... Retiring? Don't be silly. I'm going to do just the opposite. I'm planning to open another store in Middletown. Another store in Middletown? Gee, someone will have to manage it, won't they? That's right. No. <laughs> oh. I'm going to manage both stores myself. But in your condition... Dennis, you... I'm perfectly healthy. And if I look worn out, there are two very good reasons for it. What? The other one's a family problem. <laughs> oh. Yes, my wife's brother's moved in on us. He's got my room, my bed. I sleep on a cot in the den. Oh, what I wouldn't give to get rid of that guy. What would you give? Any... Dennis, get that gleam out of your eye. <laughs> Don't help me. Keep off my team, do you hear? But, Mr. Willoughby, getting rid of people is my specialty. It's a knack. I know. I've watched you with my customers. <laughs> but if I think a way, to, of a way to restore your happy home, could I manage your new store? Well, you can be sure you won't find me ungrateful. You know, that man is absolutely driving me. Oh, hi, Mildred. Oh, hello, Mildred. Well, we'll discuss this later, then. Yes, sir. Dennis, did it work? Well, uh, not exactly. But I think there's a new store I can manage. That is, if I can run a brother-in-law of Mr. Willoughby's out of town. A brother-in-law? Oh, that's Dr. Cotter. He's the new veterinarian here. Oh, yeah? Yes, he's taking care of Mrs. Stewart's show dog. And... Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Okay, I'll go get a lawyer. Oh. <laughs> no, wait. Remember the Cocker Spaniel you brought home? Well, somebody's mother? Sure, I told you. She was at the kennel getting shaved. Well, what? there's no time to explain now. Dennis, you've got to go to that nephew and get a job as his assistant. What? Mildred, what? He's brand you... new in town and he must need help. Tell him you know all about animals. Fake it. Do you think I can? Of course you can. Just keep talking. Well, okay. But it isn't going to be easy for a fellow who can't tell a Pekingese from a St. Bernard unless one of them is wearing brandy. <laughs> I see. So you'd like to be my assistant, Dr. Day. And I could really help you, Dr. Cotter. There's mighty little about the veterinarian business I don't know. Well, uh, just how much medical experience have you had with animals, Doctor? Oh, lots and lots. I've been at it since I was ten years old and helped my pet pony bring his puppies into the world. <laughs> They're uh, called colts, Doctor. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, he had nine of the cutest ones you ever saw. He? Isn't it rather unusual for a male pony to bring young into the world, Doctor Day? Why, uh... Yeah, and now that you mention it, we were all quite surprised when he managed to do it. <laughs> Of course, he was a trick pony. Um, um, Dr. Day, do you mind if I ask you a few simple questions about our work? Huh? Uh, just to make sure you're the right man for the job. I made a blunder somewhere, huh? It's barely possible, yes. For instance, what do you know about cows? Cows? Yes, they're four-legged animals that moo. Now, suppose you were called in to look at a sick cow. What's the first thing you do? 